Okay, I have just drawn a picture on the screen there of the, the problem we just solved, the Neumann problem, I called it. I called it a Neumann problem because I specified the fluxes into node 1 and 2. I specified that there was a unit divergence of the current at node 1, so a unit current into the circuit at node 1, and a unit current out of the circuit, or divergence minus 1, at a uh, node 2. And what I had to find there was the having grounded node 2 to set x2 is 0, I found the values of x1 to be 5 eighths, x3 to be 1 eighth, and x4 to be 2 eighths, or a quarter. Okay, but you know, there's another type of thing I could have asked, even just restricting to these two-point uh, source sink problems, I could have asked the following question. This is what we call a more of a Dirichlet problem. And what it means is that you don't specify the flux or into the circuit or the, you know, the, the divergence at the, at, the, at the boundaries, in this case nodes 1 and 2. You specify the values of the potentials themselves at these two, these two boundary point nodes 1 and 2. So look at the difference between these two pictures. In the lower problem, which I haven't solved yet, um, I've set the potential, I've grounded node 2 as before, and then I've set the potential at node 1 to be 1. In the previous problem, the normal problem, I solved for that potential. And at the moment, I haven't found uh, the potentials at 3 and 4, x3 and x4. I haven't found those yet. And what I'm doing now is I'm not specifying what the divergence at node 1 and 2 are. They know, I know they're equal and opposite, but I'm calling them f hat and minus f hat. I can't quite see the hats there, but anyway, uh, they're there. So you see now that uh, I'm specifying a slightly different problem. But take a, take a look at those pictures. Um, can you guess what the solution to the lower problem is, given the solution to the upper problem? Remember this problem is linear. Everything's linear. It's a linear model. And um, which means I can basically multiply solutions by the same amount. I can multiply everything by the same constant, say, and I'll still get a solution. Um, so can you see, look, I've grounded node 2 in both cases. And then the only difference, it seems to me, between is that node 1 up above is 5 eighths and below it's 1. So what if I were to multiply all the potentials by 8 over 5 and all of the currents, which means all of the net divergences of the currents. So I'm going to multiply everything I see in the top picture by 8 over 5. And then can't you see, look, that in this lower picture, x3 would be, instead of an eighth, it would be an eighth times 8 over 5, which is a fifth. And then node 4, x4 would not be 1 over a quarter, it would be times 8 over 5, and that would be 2 fifths. And of course, x, x1 would of course be the 1, that's where I got the 8 fifths from. And what would f hat be? It would be 8 fifths. Okay. And indeed, that is the solution to the Dirichlet problem in this case. So these two-point problems, there's very simple kind of mappings between the two solutions, just for the two-point problems. It's of interest, however, to try to solve the Dirichlet problem um, directly, just to see it done directly, as opposed to the little trick, trick that I showed you. And this is where the notion of a sure complement of a matrix uh, is a, it's a good place to introduce that concept, which you might have seen again in a linear algebra course. Let's remember what our linear system is. We've got this K, uh, the, our Laplacian, which in this case, let me just remind you, I've written this down before in the last lecture, I think. Okay, and then uh, if I then multiply this by X, my X for this Dirichlet problem, I've set the X1 to be one and X2 to be zero, and then I don't know X3 and X4, but I, and I don't actually know what the divergence at node 1 is. I do know that the divergence at node 2 is, the op, is minus it. And then I'm having Kirchhoff current law hold at nodes 3 and 4. 
remember, that's the whole point of these two two point um, uh, sort of sync problems. Now, I need so the unknowns are x3, x4, and f hat. Now, this is a little bit of a strange uh, linear system, isn't it? Because normally, you know, you ex it's kind of like I've got some of the unknowns on the left-hand side and some of them on the right-hand side. And of course, I could move the right-hand side over to the left-hand side and just have zero on the, on the right-hand side, but then it's not really written as a matrix system. Okay, so in other words, this is a linear system, but it's a kind of strange structure. Okay, and so this is why uh, I have this idea of a, a sure complement coming in, which, which is quite a nice concept to think about. So what I like to do is to uh, think of a block structure, a sub-block structure of this matrix K, and I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to call it P Q transpose. I know it's symmetric matrix, so this will be Q and Q transpose. And then on the diagonals, I'm going to have the, uh, the, the these are all of these are matrices now. And this this P is this matrix, and then this Q is this matrix, and then this R is that matrix. Okay. Now, if I do that, look, then K X. Oh, and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce this to be a little two vector E, e hat. This is going to be x hat, and then this is going to be f hat. And then this is just a zero vector, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is instead of kx, I'm going to write that now conveniently as p q transpose q r e hat x hat is equal to f hat and then zero. So this is my new linear system. Let's multiply out using this kind of sub-block structure, then I notice that I can get PE hat plus Q transpose X hat is equal to uh, F hat, and then QE hat plus RX hat, these are all vectors, is zero. Okay, now I'm just underline the vectors just to emphasize that they're, they're the vectors. Okay, and now this is what turns out to be nice, is it turns out that you can prove there's another little exercise that R is invertible. Okay, it's a subblock of this matrix K, um, which has one uh, right null vector. We decided that. Um, so, so it actually means this little exercise just to convince yourself of this a little exercise in linear algebra that um, that R is invertible, which means that this second equation, so if we call this one and two, it means that two implies that the x hat that we're looking for, of course, well, let, let's do it in two stages. I've got R x hat is minus Q e hat, which implies since R hat is in, R is invertible, that x hat is minus Q, um, sorry, minus R inverse Q e hat, okay? Right, I just take an R inverse of both sides of that equation and I get the x hat is minus R hat. But of course then, one implies that my f hat, if I didn't know that, that was PE hat minus Q transpose R inverse Q E hat. Okay? So this tells me actually that P minus Q transpose R inverse Q times E hat is in fact the f hat that I'm looking for, and this is in fact the um, is in fact the x hat that I'm looking for, the two values x3 and x4, look here, that I'm looking for, okay? Okay, so, so actually I just wanted to tell you that uh, it's not that important that you know the name for it, but this actually is known as the sure complement of the subblock R in the matrix K, okay? And it arises naturally here. It's a funny little combination, isn't it, of these subblocks? It's the sh known as the sure complement, and you can kind of see naturally why it arises here. It's because um, I kind of need to, in this particular problem, I kind of need to solve for some Dirichlet data, the values of the voltages, but also some of the some of the uh, Neumann data, the values of the net fluxes. It's a, kind of a mixture of the two, and that's when these sure complements naturally arise. Okay. Now I'm going to leave this as a little exercise because we decided at the beginning of this lecture what the answer was. So we found that f hat was actually 8 over 5, didn't we? 
And we also decided that the values of x hat was, uh, I think it was a fifth and two fifths. Okay. And so uh, I'll leave a little exercise for you to take these matrices P, uh, Q and R and check that this particular x hat given there and then this kind of sure complement acting on E hat gives you the same answers.